Hey, welcome back to Apple 3 community. It's been a while since we did uh, tech talks on the channel because we were very busy with summertime and holidays and basically streaming a lot of events for you guys. But we figured out we're going to do a new video for the tech people today, so this one's just for you. We're going to take a look at the Xtable SQL file, what it does and how version 9 can help you ease a little bit of the work that you have with it, so stay tuned. So if you want to add new tables to your Type 3 installation for your extension, for your editors to work with, you need an Xtables SQL file. And we're going to take a look at what it looks like by default. So check this out. So I have my YouTube demo extension right here. And there's an Xtable SQL file uh, located in the root folder. And you can see that it's a lot of, lot of table and field definitions, it's one table definition and a lot of field definitions. But you can see that you have a field for the UID value for the PID, which is the page ID, so the field, uh, the identifier of the page where the record is located. Um, and then there's a lot of meta fields, so this is the timestamp, this is the field that's being updated whenever the record is updated with the current time. There's the CR date, which is an acronym for creation date. So um, the timestamp field keeps the last update, the creation date obviously just the date of the creation. Then we have a CR user ID, that's the creating user ID, the ID of the backend user who created the record. Then we have a flag which is called deleted. This makes sure that if you delete a record, it's still in the database, but it's flagged as deleted. So you can get it back with the recycler, for example. Then we have the hidden field, which obviously does what, it, what the name suggests, it flags a record as hidden. So it won't be uh, displayed on the website, for example, but you can still work with it in the backend. Then we have uh, the sorting field, which you need if you want to sort records up and down. Um, and then we have quite a lot of, uh, whoops, do it here. We got um, a few language related fields. So. First up, there's the syslanguage UID. This is the ID of the language that you created in the backend. So if you want to do a translation to a different language, say French, um, the uh, language ID would be stored in this field for this uh, particular record. Um, then we have the L10N parent. This is the record um, or the ID of the record. That's the, the, the master record or the parent record. So. Um, say you create a language or, or a website in English first and then translate it to French, um, each record would have the original English version in the parent. Um, the next field is the L10N source and this is the idea of the record that the translation has been created from. So imagine you have a website which runs in French French and Canadian French. Um, then you can translate the Canadian French version of the record off the French version. So the l source would be set to um, this specific field. Then there's the l state field, which basically decides in which language mode the record currently is. So there's free mode, there's connected mode. Um, that's stored in here. Then we have the T3 auric UID. I'm going to move that down because that's not belonging there. Um, so if we stick to the language stuff, we now have the L10N div source. And what this does, it stores a div between two records so that you can see what has changed to the original record after you translated it. So you can hand over the record to your translation agency and say, hey, you did a translation eight weeks ago, but yesterday we did changes to the original. Can you please update uh, the translation of the record? Very helpful. Next up, we got a lot of fields internally for versioning. So we have the T3 auric UID, which is the original UID which the version has been created uh, from. Then we have the T3 version original ID. This is the version that the record has been created from if you have cascading uh, workspaces. Um, the T3 version ID, that's the internal version ID, think of it like a commit hash, only that is a numeric value. Um, we got the T3 version label, which you can put on it 
to go like draft version two or update for trade fair XYZ. Then we have the workspace ID, which identifies the workspace the record is currently located in. Then we have the T3 ver stage field, which describes, uh, no, the state, sorry, state is <laughs> the next one, but state is in which current status um, the record is in. The stage field is the workspace stage the record is in because you can have multi-stage workflows within TYPO3. The T3 version count basically counts the amount of versions that are um, available for a given record. Then we have a T3 ver T stamp field, which again is the timestamp of that version once the version um, has been updated for the last time. And then we have the move ID. This is important if you move records around so it knows where to resort the record to. And then finally, we have the one field we really want, and that's our small little input field. And then we set up a couple of indices, um, which are helpful for selecting data faster. So that's what this SQL file does. So you see, just in order to get like an input field running, uh, th like the most basic type of a record with, with just one field, you need to have a lot of other fields defined um, for your, for your SQL file. This is a lot of stuff to type and most people just copy paste it from A to B, but in version 9.3, we added a new functionality for core, which drastically reduces the amount of fields you actually need. So what we can do is this, all this metadata right here can just be removed. So you need to keep the UID, the PID, um, and the fields you really want to have. So if we save this and then switch over to our backend and go to admin tools maintenance and let it load for a sec, we can then, I'm going to make it a bit bigger, that's easier to see. Um, we're then going to analyze the database structure and what's now happening is that TYPO3 will take a look at all field definitions both of core and your own extensions and check it against the current database schema. And as you can see here, it identified that there's a lot of fields to add, mostly in this one table. So unfortunately, we didn't yet figure out a way how to, um, how to format this in a way that it's easier to read, but we're working on that. Um, but you can see that we have the UID field, the PID field, the input field, and then TYPO3 will automatically add all these metadata fields on its own just for you. So it's a lot easier to set up the stuff. You don't need to focus on all the internal fields type of we might be using. So if the core team adds new fields to the table who might be necessary, um, you don't have to think about these because core will automatically add these for you. So what we do now is we apply the select the changes, keep our fingers crossed that everything works, which it should. And then the table is being created and we can continue to work with our TYPO3 installation. So that's all there is to this file. It's not that hard. You need to know a little bit about the basics, but that's it. So happy coding and see you next time.